Buenos dias, fellow gamers. My name is Sid. How are you guys doing? Today, I do have another banger video for you. And this time, it is about the war character in a crystal suit that I haven't played in a long time. Valban Prime. Do you know what's funny? In this game, it's supposed to be a survival for us. But with this Valban build, we're gonna have this magic card. Basically, what this means is we're gonna turn this game into a survival mode. Not for us, but for the enemies. Before we're getting started, there's two short things I want to mention. First of all, yes, we are so back, baby. Let's go. The reason why I haven't recorded lately or within the last two weeks is because my PC died. The reason for that is this. Not sure if you're familiar with that, but if you get that screen, it basically means your PC is dead. You know, rest in peace. After trying many paths, steel paths, ha, jokes on me. I wasn't able to fix it by myself or with the help of friends, which is why I had to send it back. So now that I have back my PC, we are able to make videos again, let's go. The second thing I want to mention is my collaboration with Bloodstained Games. They have made, in my opinion, a very good game, currently only available for Android. If you click on the link in the description down below, you're gonna find this. You're gonna see some gameplay, you're gonna hear me reflecting about the game, and to quote myself, actually, a great game. Give it a try. Starting off with the Helminth ability, well, there's quite a few abilities that you can put on Valban. Um, however, one ability I do like very much on him, um, since you're going to be camping in a spot most likely, most of the time, um, is the ability from Ivara called Quiver. Starting off with the builds, you know me, I'm a very huge Smita main, so um, I decided to do something else. I decided to use the Chesa Kubro, and the reason for that is you have this mod, which is basically um, very helpful when it comes to Equilibrium. I'm gonna show you that once we get to the Mauban um, build. Synth Deconstruct. Enemies injured by companions have a 25% chance to drop a health orb when killed. Since the enemies are always going to be stuck in the vortex, it is very easy for the companion to just like go there and attack the enemy. I do like the unique Chessa mod called Neutralize, it makes the enemies drop their weapons. Also, Retrieve is quite nice to have a chance to scavenge additional loot from fallen enemies. Moving on, we're gonna have the Zenith Star. I don't know if you remember the Zenith Star from back then, but let's just say it was pretty strong. So, um, it does have a unique trait now. Basically, the disc lasts for 10 seconds, but it's increased by the combo multiplier, which is why we have a, dr a drifting contact. I still have this Riven from back then. Crit um, chance is not too bad, melee damage and range is obviously the things you want to go for, but also attack speed is quite nice. One thing I noticed, you're going to see that in the gameplay soon, that it's actually very easy to build up combo with Sandstar, which is why Whipping Wounds and Blood Rush come in handy. You don't need to mod this for Corrosive, as you already have an Arcane that provides you with that melee exposure. Do you guys remember this mod, Spring Loaded Blade, on status effect, plus one range for 24 seconds, stacks up to two times. So that synergizes super well with Primed Reach. Of course you have Prime Pressure Point for melee damage, and like I said, Berserker Fury for attack speed. This mod will give you occasional opportunities to perform heavy attacks faster, also with the cost of no combo counter. Moving on to the secondary weapon of choice, the Kuva Nukor, or as I named it, the Bully Maguire. How'd that get in there? <laughs> One thing you notice right away is that this weapon has a lot of status effects, and a lot of status. We have heat, we have radiation, viral, magnetic. Long story short, the more status effects you're gonna apply on enemies, the faster they're gonna die. For the mods, damage, multi-shot fire rate, status chance and direct damage per status type, damage, multi-shot, cold and toxin on the Riven which create viral, and of course scorch for heat. In the Exilus slot I went for Trig Mag because I simply like having more ammo. The thing about the Arcane is you can totally use Secondary Merciless, which um, gives you damage up to 360% if I remember correctly. In my situation that would be better because I don't have Cascadia Fly maxed out, so that would be more ideal. But I wanted to show you an option that provides you with even more damage. If you're using Cascadia Fly, basically what this does, on Heat Status Effect, 6% damage for 10 seconds, stacks up to 240. If you have that on Rank 5, that is 480% additional damage on Heat Status Effect. And keep in mind, we do have Heat on our Kuba Nukor, so we're gonna deal a lot more damage. For the primary weapon, it doesn't really matter which weapon you use, um, but if you want to go for armor strip and you're going to use those green archon shards, I would totally mod it for corrosive. I can show you the build real quick, but um, if you want to have a more in-depth view of the build, um, just make sure to check out my Revenant video. Also, what I forgot to mention, I'm using the Naraman Focus Tree, as this is going to help you out with your combo counter. It doesn't deplete fully, but it decays over time. On to the big daddy, the Volvan Prime build. 
When it comes to the Arcanes, I'm using Molt Augmented for Strength and Arcane Energize for additional energy. In the auto slot, Energy Siphon to regen our energy. Prime Show Footed just to make sure we don't get knocked down. Of course, Ability to Duration. Energy Nexus for even more energy regen. His unique mod, Repelling Best Heal, which basically makes your Vortex last longer. Prime Continuity for Ability Duration. Of course, Primed Flow for Energy Max. Okay, so why Archon Stretch? If you look at his first ability, Tessa Nervous, you're gonna see that it's inflicting electricity status. So when you inflict electricity status, you're also uh, regaining energy over time. Honestly, I love having Rolling God on this, because if your shields are depleting, you're gonna be invulnerable for 3 seconds, and you also wipe away those status effects. Last but not least, Equilibrium, which is just another source of giving us energy. And if you remember, this also synergizes well with the Chessa Kubro mod. On to some shard suggestions. You're gonna see that later in the gameplay, I was like experimenting a little bit, and in my opinion, um, two important shards that you can equip are the Ember Archon shards, and here I would go for the casting speed, you know, if you have it to top of watch, of course, go for that, as it is 37.5, and if you, have, if you have that twice, you're above 70% casting speed, which is super nice. For the next Archon shot, I would use two of the Emerald Archon shots, and I would select the increased max stacks of Corrosion status by two. Um, you don't need to have a Tower Forge, it's, it's enough if, if it's like a, a normal shot, you know. With that being said, you already placed four of the five shots. Now the question remains, which shot can you use? If you look at the Violet Archon shot, you could literally go for the last uh, aspect, which uh, is basically like a mini equilibrium. When it comes to the Topaz Archon shot, you can go for the increased secondary critical chance by 1% every time you kill an enemy with uh, heat status. If you remember, Aokuva Mukor has heat. And uh, it's getting amplified by the damage anyway, um, due to the arcane. And you can also use this in addition, you know, if you have a tough watch, even better. I also think with a blue azure shark, you can never go wrong, as energy max is always like a good option. However, if you decide to use a red crimson shark, you can either go for ability strength or ability duration, um, so you don't always have to spam it, and you can rely on your um, cloak to last longer slash vortex. There's something I would like to show you in the simulacrum real quick. So we're gonna go to Oricon because they're enemies that are quite well armored. We're gonna summon them, 20 of them, steel path by the way. So what you can do is you can already activate your overdriver, but um, I would recommend using the vortex first. So we're gonna make sure they're gonna be stuck in place. We're gonna use our Zenoric, uh, not, sorry. Um, not to nourish <laughs> Zenistar. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna launch the blade. Look at the duration of that, 120 seconds. So as you can see, they're already getting applied with so many status effects. We're gonna shoot them with the Kuva Nukor, and now we're gonna shoot them with our primary weapon that has a lot of corrosion. And um, well, the, long story short, there's nothing they can do. You know, they're just gonna die. We're gonna have the damage boost from Overdriver. We're gonna have the status effect from the Zenistar, which applies corrosive to the Arcane. We're gonna have the bunch of other status effects from the Kuva Nukor, and of course our primary weapon, that just melts them like super easily. But um, well, I mean of course that's just the simulacrum, I'm gonna show you some actual gameplay, okay? Time for some Steel Path gameplay. By the way, you're gonna notice that it's like a little bit darker in my room, that's because I was recording at night. Okay, so, so getting started. The first thing you're gonna do when you launch the mission is you're gonna look for a nice camping spot. Secondly, you're gonna activate your third ability that I replaced, you know, if you remember we have the Quiver, the other thing you're gonna do is you're gonna activate your fourth ability, which is the Bastille slash Vortex. This is gonna make sure that the enemies are gonna be stuck in place. The most important thing is, well, it always depends on the map to be honest, but um, in this case, the important thing for me is not to use too much range. If you're using too much range, they're gonna be stuck on the other side, and for example, you can't drag them towards you, because they're gonna be stuck like over there, and then they can't like teleport through a wall, you know? What I also like doing is activate the um, first ability near my Vortex, um, because Tesla Nervous, if you check this, it deploys a roller drone that attaches itself to enemies and delivers bursts of arcing electricity. So this also shocks the enemies, and if you remember we have this mod, Arcan Stretch, it also gives us back energy when we apply electricity status onto enemies. Always make sure to refresh your third ability so that you don't come out of invisibility. To be fair, you can check at the top uh, when it's about to expire, so you can just cast it then. I'm gonna show you something else too. Look, we have the Zenistar equipped. Did you see that? With just one hit, we have a combo multiplier of 4. Look, look what happens if I hit them now. Multiply, multiplier of 8, multiplier of 10, and multiplier of 12. 
And since we do have Tenokai, um, there's always a chance we don't lose combo count. Well, even if you lose your combo counter, look how easily we can build it up again. Just one strike and it's already at 7, already at 9, 12. You know? You see that? Easy peasy. As you can see from time to time, I'm using the Overdriver um, ability, which is basically the second ability. Uh, it just boosts your damage even further. Since we do have a plus 12 combo count multiplier, look how long the Zenistar is going to stay. If we just throw a blade, look, 118 seconds of duration. You remember that back then when that was possible? Now imagine combining that with Ivara and you can still guide it. Like, this is so cool. This takes me back all the way, you know? Like, I remember when, when Zenistar was that good, when I was like playing Necros, and I just played Zenistar Necros all the time, because it was so good. Some people might think this game style is pretty boring. Well, it can be, you know, but for me, um, it's it's refreshing because I like to swap out frames. So that's actually a lie, I'm a, I'm a big Revenant main. But seriously, you know, sometimes playing Vauban can be quite refreshing. You know, the great thing about this is, it doesn't really matter which faction you're facing, because you're always going to be invisible, and the only thing that could kill you are big-ass explosions or status. One thing I do notice right away, though, is that casting speed would be super beneficial. Like... Casting that for the ability to, in to be invisible, or just casting that for the ability to stuck them in place like super quick, or stick them in place super quick, rather, it's just super important. It's just so cool, you can always have your Zenistar active. Just look at that duration, dude. Like, you're invisible, you cast your fourth, they're stuck in place, they're always getting damaged by the Zenistar, you can uh, damage them with your weapon, with your secondary, the Kuva Nukor. It's just great, dude. Like, they're just gonna die, there. there's nothing they can do, and... Yeah, this is literally easy mode for you. That's gonna do it for this video. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you awesome people in the next one.